Well, here's a fun little one. I always wanted to make a uh, pulse motor that was triggered optically. And the designs that I had seen, they used one of these optical sensors, but they were card readers. In other words, they had a slotted card that the optical sensor was triggered by the light going through a slotted card. And then I found this little guy here, and this is a forward-looking optical sensor, what they call a reflective object sensor. And I found an electric electronic uh, gold mine, and I got a couple just to see if they would work. And then I hunted and hunted for the right circuit diagram, and I finally fiddled around with it for several days and got it to run on a AA battery. And that's only drawing about um, 11 or 12 milliamps on the AA battery. And uh, this is the circuit diagram that I came up with. And I'm calling this the uh, just the reflective object sensor pulse motor. And you can s stop this and freeze frame it and see the diagram. But basically, what happens here is there's an infrared LED that shines a light on a shiny magnet. The magnet reflects the light to a phototransistor, which gives a signal to an amplifier circuit and that circuit triggers the coil to fire at the right time. And like I say, I, I fiddled around with all these different um, values until I came up with a circuit that worked. And I'm lid motor, and this is uh, October 12, 2014. And uh, I got this uh, sensor at Electronic Gold Mine. You can Google that, and this is a great place for the hobby people like me to find parts, and there are all kinds of interesting stuff they sell. And this is the sensor, and like I say, there's a uh, LED uh, infrared diode that points this way. It reflects off a shiny object or even a white object and bounces back, hits the phototransistor, and sends out a signal. Uh, they don't usually use them like this for motor controls. They're used for other, like, counters and stuff. But uh, the thing was a dollar and a half. It was not bad. And, and there's all different kinds on eBay and stuff that you can uh, get. But um, I got this to work on a AA battery. And all the circuits that I looked at were 5-volt kind of scenarios with a dropping down resistor. And uh, I got this thing to actually trigger on a volt and a half. This is what it sounds like with the radio. Just putts along. Just a putt putt. Ben, you'll like this one. This is like um, the putt putt motor, <laughs> only low voltage instead of high voltage. And uh, on your your motor, you use uh, an optical sensor too, but I don't know if it was this kind. And this was one of the motivations was um, your uh, video on the high voltage pulse motor that was triggered by an optical sensor, and of course a different kind of circuit. But Anyway, that was a lot of fun, and I let this thing run overnight, and like I say, uh, I did some calculations. This thing will run a week or more on a AA battery at the kind of amp draw that it's putting out, um, or drawing on, a, on just that AA battery. Um, but a lot of fun, and once again, uh, what happens here is the shiny magnet is shinier than the white rotor. And if you set up these values just right, and I had to use potentiometers, and then after I got the settings right with potentiometers, I just put in the hard resistor. But it sends out the light signal, bounces off the magnet, comes back to the um, phototransistor, that puts out a signal to this little amplifier circuit, and uh, makes the thing go. Uh, one's a PNP transistor, and the other one's an NPN. And I'm sure there's all kinds of other values that could be used here, but getting this to run on a volt and a half was one of my big goals. And there it is, the reflex, reflective object sensor pulse motor. Thanks for watching.